What's going on guys? My name is Eri and today we are looking at the Kronos Wool Farm. I am so sorry. This is a showcase video for the Kronos Wool Farm, designed by Monica and myself. Since showing the farm during our latest tour, I've received a lot of requests to release the design, so this video will serve as an explanation for the farm, and a world download link can be found in the description. The farm has 3,584 sheep contained within it, and is capable of producing 409,000 wool per hour. However, there is a huge asterisk next to those rates, and I'll be explaining that a little bit later as well. But first, I'd like to walk you through my inspiration for the farm. I first became interested in wool farms years ago after I stumbled upon the Mechanist wool farm which was designed way back at the start of 2020. Now by today's standards this farm is pretty rudimental, but it had a cool concept that really intrigued me. Also no shade at anybody who had a hand in designing this from Mecha, it was built a long long time ago and I highly doubt any of you would consider this your magnum opus. Now one of the cool things that intrigued me here was the feed tape and the detection. So. The sheep eats the grass, it's then turned into a dirt block, and then from that signal that they take from the detection, they use that to shear the sheep. They also then push the blocks along. So the dirt travels down this feed tape where it's surrounded by grass, and that means that it's able to get random ticked, turned back into grass, meaning it can return to the sheep as grass. It's pushed underneath them. So that means that they're always going to have grass to be able to eat, meaning you're never gonna wait around for grass to random tick underneath the sheep, which could take a really long time. It's a cool concept. The collection method that they used for this farm left a little bit to be desired, but it was cool and I liked it, but I wanted to improve on the concept. By now, I assume that everybody is familiar with glass item elevators. Well, when I started designing this farm years ago, I didn't know that the same happened with sheep when you shear them, as long as their head is within the glass block. Now, by now, this has been shown in farms already. Dark has released a farm, and Ian as well, I believe. Uh, but I'm just very slow at releasing my farms, so yeah. Also, you can also do the same with bartering farms, as long as their head is within the glass. So now we know how we're going to remove the wool from the farm. The next step is figuring out how to shear the sheep and move the blocks around. And this is where Monica really cooked. This entire system was designed by them. I can't take a single bit of credit for it. They worked on this for months, trying to shave blocks, get the reset faster, and generally trying to improve wherever possible. Now, as a side note, I have to say that working with Monica on this was an absolute pleasure. The development took place literally over the course of years, off and on, and their dedication to improving things is what motivated me to actually finish this. So thank you, Monica, sincerely. So how does this work? This is a little demonstration of how the feed tape operates. We'll use a shovel on the block to create a block change to simulate the grass being eaten. And I have some red wool in here to simulate the shears being used. So as you can see, it's pretty seamless. It's got a 10 game tick reset, meaning the new grass block is underneath the sheep after 10 game ticks. The rest of the tape still has some finishing to do after the 10 game ticks, but it will always catch up, which I can demonstrate here. We do that. And this is just a quick look at the farm, sort of from all angles. This is all the mechanisms. It it might seem a bit silly to say that this took months to design, but this was the, obviously just the final iteration. Uh, it's quite clever it uses the same signal from the detection to then push and shear and it's very nice and compact so we have our feed tape the next step is to design an actual farm and this is it this is what we came up with it's the most basic tile of the Kronos wool farm so it's got a couple of things obviously grass all around the feed tape so that the dirt blocks can be random ticked it has a locking mechanism here which essentially just pushes the observer, which is made to detect the grass. So even if this sheep was to eat this grass block, the observer's over here, so it can't detect it. Nothing's going to move. While, while this is locked, there's no moving parts in this farm. 
It also has the rail lines for the shear distribution as well as locking and unlocking for the hoppers. Now, you might want to build the full-scale farm. I wouldn't recommend it. It was designed specifically for the Kronos server in terms of our capacity for lag and what our machine can actually handle when run full-scale. So you might want to just make a small one like this, put eight in each, do a different color for each one and have one of every color. You might want to do something like this and fill it up with sheep and have one of different every different color. It's up to you and you can manage your distribution system and your collection however you wish because the wool's just going to pop out the top here. But I wouldn't recommend building the full scale one unless you're on a server. So before we dive into looking at the specifics of the full scale farm, I just wanted to show you what it looks like. This is what it looks like inside, full of sheep, rail lines for the shear distribution, box loaders, on and off switches here, pre-powered dust so it's not going to be too laggy, you shouldn't be flicking it too hard anyway. Now there is a bit of a discrepancy in the world download, the brown line for some reason activates the purple one, don't at me, I don't care, I don't know why it's like that but it is. Now, in terms of collection, this is what we went with on the full-scale farm. Uh, it took a little bit of work to get the water flow just right, but essentially it all pops out here, you know, off from their heads, and it flows down to this one singular line. There's no loss at all, it's completely lossless, and it just goes into box loaders here, which will load it up and spit it out. When the box loader does spit things out, it will align it differently depending on which color it is. So each one has in the vertical has a different alignment. So you can see this one aligns against a glass pane. This one is against a wall. This one is against a trapdoor and that one just goes straight against the glass. So if we, for instance, put something into here, it will fall all the way down and it will travel up here and then when it reaches the top it's going to collide here and then that's gone straight into the yellow there by the way the storage here was all designed by Obi I have to say a big thank you to him actually. Uh, Monica and I had the alignment thing, but our storage solution was primitive to say the least. Uh, and then Obi came in last minute and basically threw this together and just made our concept like, you know, actually good. And now we don't have to have box sorters, we can just use the alignment, which is really cool. So thank you, Obi. Shear distribution. The way we handle that is we have boxes of shears here which then go down to these two minecarts now when the when the system is on when any of the farms are running whether you you can operate them individually you can flick every single one and have them all going at the same time but if at least one of them is going it will set the minecarts off and they are constantly going around in a line filling up all of the droppers and then into dispensers with shears and then coming back and being loaded up they will only stop doing that when the farm is turned off. And we have this little light here to indicate whether there's carts on the track and you should not unload the area. I mean, I don't know if I really have to say this, but this farm is not unload proof. You really need to make sure that everything has stopped fully before you unload this area or you're gonna have an awful, awful time. Okay, let's discuss dirt paws. Dirt paws is a term that was coined by Monica and myself when we were designing the farm. It essentially describes dirt going around the feed tape and not getting random ticked in time to turn back to grass and then the sheep end up with dirt underneath them and it grinds the farm to a halt. Essentially you end up then waiting for this one specific grass block, dirt block, to change back into a grass block which isn't ideal. So the number of sheep matters because the more sheep you have 
the more often the feed tape is going to be pushing things around and the more likely you're going to end up with dirt here because you want enough time for the random ticks to happen and these get turned back into grass. So right now these sheep cannot eat until this specific block gets random ticked. So we looked at all different numbers of sheep per module. We looked at increments of two, four, six, eight, ten, etc. All the way up to like 28, I believe. And essentially we found that for us in 1.17, eight sheep was the best. That is simply because dirt pools happen less often and therefore the farm was able to continuously run. Now, when we talk about rates, there is a big asterisk next, next to it because in 1.18 and above, in 1.18 specifically, they changed how AI tasks work. And for some tasks, such as sheep eating grass, it now happens half as often. So for a lot of wool farms, the rates are essentially cut in half. Now, the rates for this farm are not cut in half. There's about a loss of 40%, but it's a bit annoying. Now, I haven't done a tremendous amount of testing in 1.20, but I believe that if you build the same farm and you put... I think either 12 or 14 sheep in this, you're going to get similar rates to what I got in 17, but I haven't tested it extensively, so I'm not going to tell you that that's exactly true. You might have to go and test that for yourself, or just build it in 1.17 and have the best rates. Let's get down to the brass tacks of the rates. So in 1.17, each cell will produce 915 wool per hour, and the full scale farm will produce 409,920 wool per hour. In 1.18 and above, each cell will produce 527 wool per hour, and the full-scale farm will produce 236,096 wool per hour. It's a loss of about 42%, but that's only if you're only putting 8 sheep in per module. If you wanted to play around with that, feel free, and you'll probably get better rates. And that's about it. If you're here at the end, you've just watched an entire video about wool farming. If you need any help, please feel free to come to the Kronos Ask for Help channel and ask there. I'm there all the time, feel free to ping me. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. Bye bye!